Hey everybody, Dr. Sean. I'm a health and performance optimizing physician from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and now also Sarasota, Florida, where I am in the process of setting up my second site. Now I wanna welcome my Muslim followers and uh, share with you uh, a video on Ramadan. And for those of you who are not Muslim, might be watching this just out of curiosity and interest, I think you can still benefit from this. So I'm gonna be covering the benefits of Ramadan, which is chiefly a religious um, a practice where fasting is occurring in the Muslim faith. And I have been asked to do um, a short video on the benefits of Ramadan uh, and the practice uh, uh, that it brings uh, by a Muslim follower and uh, who's uh, a friend of mine. He's actually uh, uh, a, a long-term follower and it's really helped me out a lot, uh, give me advice along the way how to reach more people on social media. So uh, let me just uh, get into this and start exploring the benefits. So um, I was happy to do this and one of the reasons why I just have to use as a researcher looking at health and performance optimization. Uh, I get an opportunity to look at cultures all over the world and histories. I'm fascinated by history of people all over the world. And I have got to share with you, I have a particular attraction uh, to uh, the Arab culture. And the reason I'm attracted to it is from a biological standpoint. And I uh, am particularly intrigued at the fact that they were largely uh, nomads, nomadic in this desert region. Um, there wasn't a lot of crops growing, grain and vegetables. Uh, largely, they were camel herders. And so they predominantly ate, in the past, a meat-based diet. And they did uh, itinerant work. They were, they were nomadic. They roamed around. And, uh, and so they from a lifestyle perspective, they lived a really healthy life. Now for my vegan followers out there, vegetarians, hang with me, okay? Um, you know, there, there's definite value to vegetables and plants, um, but um, let's just say there weren't a lot for, uh, the, the, for many centuries, thousands of years, uh, in the Middle East because it just it, it did not have a lot of uh, uh, lend itself with environmental conditions for a lot of plants and grains and things like that. So uh, one of the, the key features I saw or I appreciate in, uh, uh, in uh, the Arab culture, and this is uh, uh, an Arab uh, uh, back in 19, uh, 1913, I think is the year, uh, before the influence of the Western, you know, uh, culture getting involved in there with oil production things and uh, a, a civilization or, or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, beset upon that particular region. Um, there, they were Arabs back uh, uh, before all of you know, civilization and influence of Western, uh, Western culture. Um, they, they had long, lean faces. Very different from the faces of Arabs today, largely because of lifestyle. And the, the same thing is happening to Americans, but it's not as profound. Uh, I think the genetics uh, of our um, uh, Arab people are unique uh, based on their lifestyle. So I'm fascinated by them and I paid a lot of attention to them when I was in the Middle East on, on different opportunities uh, to be over there. And this, uh, this individual has a very lean face, uh, very low inflammation. Uh, look how wide open their eyes are. You can see uh, almost the entire, uh, the entire iris, you know, the color part of the eye. And uh, all, all that white is showing, their eyes are wide open. Who's got wide open eyes? Kids. Why do kids have wide open eyes? Um, it's because they're so healthy. Their mitochondria is so healthy. They just have a countenance, a gaze upon, upon them. And we see this in young people, not because they're young, but because of the absence of disease. And we would see that in older people if we could stop uh, ourselves from be the, the acquiring chronic disease, in particular, visceral fat. So we'll be getting into that. Here's another error from earlier. I think, I think the last one was 1917. This one is 1913. Uh, again, very wide, wide open eyes, and the whites of their eyes are very wide. So 
very interesting uh, history and culture. Uh, I'm sad that uh, I'm happy that you know they've they've been um, you know fortunate to to discover oil and of course bring a lot of wealth to them. But at the same time, it's bringing a lot of disease because with wealth, uh, unless you have the correct insights, comes disease. And so um, I think uh, that that is unfortunate. All right, so I'm gonna stand right in the middle here and uh, get down a little bit low and ask you a question. Um, how long uh, did it take for this individual to improve their face from this photograph here to this photograph here? What is the time period? So I um, wanna ask you that question and uh, while you're thinking about it to, to improve their face that much, uh, I will tell you, um, very surprised, with, uh, let set you up to let you know how significant this is. I've looked at these photographs more than any other two photographs in my lifetime. Th this is very interesting. This individual improved their face that much in just three days. Three days. Okay, so what did they do? They fasted. So Ramadan is um, a opportunity, a religious practice in the Muslim faith, uh, largely a fasting where... Uh, Muslim believers fast from from sunrise to sunset. They don't eat anything during that. That typically it's about a twelve hour period of time when it's when it's happening. I suppose that changes based on where you are uh, in the planet from sunrise to sunset. But that's that's what it is. So this individual here is a client of mine. Improved his face that much. Now, if you're watching, you I want to let you know you're not going to improve your face this much in three days from just fasting um, if you got visceral fat. This guy improved his face, he's a client of mine, this much because he did not have visceral fat. He got rid of his visceral fat and that's why he had this extraordinary change. If he had done the same fasting, deprived himself of all calories for 72 hours, three days straight uh, with visceral fat, uh, he would not have had this kind of change. So visceral fat interferes with your ability to have a uh, the same degree of physiological response. So uh, your face can improve significantly if you don't have visceral fat from a from a from fasting. But it's not like if you fast, nothing goes on. Lots of really great thing goes on, and chiefly, it's the elimination of visceral fat. So, getting rid of this highly inflammatory fat inside, deep in your abdomen, is a profound benefit from Ramadan, from fasting 12 hours a day uh, during this period of time when uh, the Muslim community is fasting. Now, here's another example uh, of an individual and credit to them while we roam. Uh, you, can, you can follow them on Instagram. Very interesting couple, do a lot of really uh, interesting trips and great content to follow. Um, this is the husband who started a fast, and I believe this is nine days. He improved his face from here to here, and you can notice his eyes, how much improvement he had in his eyes besides his face. So fasting has the ability to really, really improve you. now. He was, in my opinion, um, I did not scan him, he probably had a lot of subcutaneous fat and not as much visceral fat because he has this significant improvement um, in his face from doing this particular fast. So you will notice if you do fasting that you, uh, some change in your face and how much change you have in your face will also be an indication of how much visceral fat you have. The more change you have, the less visceral fat you, you will have had in your, your body. Now here's my own change in my face. This is me when I formed, before I knew even those two words, visceral fat, I didn't even know what they were when this photograph was taken. But shortly after this photograph was taken, I, I became aware of visceral fat and I started dramatically working hard to get rid of my visceral fat. And this is me today, how much my face has changed over this period of time. So this is actually about 13, um, well, this is actually 11 years, it's now 12 years uh, uh, to, the, to, to, to today, but this is in this photograph, 11 years difference between 
my face is so visceral fat causes this inflammation in your face and fasting is one of the best strategies for eliminating visceral fat and over a period of time that accum the um the the accumulated benefit from eliminating visceral fat is profound how much it improves your face and your body not just your face so this was my body and one of the telltale signs uh, the influence of visceral fat is weakening of your muscles. So you get these, you get a uh, weakening of your abdominal musculature, weakening of your skeletal muscle all over your body, including the muscles that hold up your spine. So um, I got this crooked spine here, like this character here, who looks like a six, like a 70 or 80 year old guy, and this looks like a teenager. And here I am, uh, here. Uh, at about 55 years of age, and here I am at 58 years of age, and my spine is straightened out because my muscles have improved. They've, they've recovered, and I'm just about to turn 61, and they still continue to recover. They're still improving. And so you want to look good. You want to look vital. You want to look vigorous, and you want to be vigorous by getting rid of that visceral fat and being healthy. So Ramadan fasting is one of my chief strategies to help people improve. All right, let's talk about eating. So I was in the Middle East during Ramadan and I've been uh, invited to many of the dinners. Once you, once sunset, um, sunset happens and you're, you're able to eat again after that period of fasting, there's tons of food, but, uh, and there's quite a selection. It is, wow, boy, do they have great buffets over there. And uh, eating is, is serious business when they when they break their fast. But you know, I would challenge you if you um, are currently doing Ramadan, and I hope you're having a, a fantastic Ramadan, um, to not just indulge in eating gluttonous food, but try to you know eat healthy food. Recognizing your body is such a treasure, and don't put crappy, lousy, good tasting food in but eat good, nutritious food. So here's an example of what I like to do. I have good grass-fed beef in there, and you can, of course, eat other ruminants um, that are available for you to, to eat. Venison, you can, you can eat goat, you can eat lamb, um, you, can, uh, you can eat good, healthy, best quality meat possible. And uh, these vegetables that I have around here, I like to eat vegetables, even though uh, your ancestors, if you're, you're Arab of old, did not eat a lot of vegetables. I do eat uh, vegetables today and advocate them, but I only eat vegetables that have been fermented to reduce the exposures to oxalates and lectins and phthalates and um, these other substances that we're learning more about uh, that are present in vegetables and how they are eliminated when you ferment these vegetables. So uh, it basically pre preserves all the nutritional value but eliminates some of these toxic effects that aren't gonna kill you but over a period of time, the trickle, trickle, trickle of these toxic micronutrients, microtoxins, um, do cause problems and concerns. And that's why we're seeing a lot of people getting benefits from the carnivore diet. So um, if you're somebody who's really unhealthy, uh, you could consider eliminating for a period of time vegetables and fruit and plants from your diet and try only eating uh, vegetables and fruit if they've been fermented, okay? The other benefit, even though there's less toxins um, or no toxins really uh, in fruit, there is carbohydrates and fructose, and I recommend eating fruit uh, when it's fermented. There are many people who can eat fruit. They're not gonna be a problem. But I'm speaking to the guy or woman, the man or woman here that's heavy uh, or had a period of obesity in their life and you just have likely compromised your metabolism that you should not be eating that kind of fruit. If you're a young, healthy person uh, and you can eat fruit and get away with it, um, you're, you're in a different situation. The man or woman, and you know who you are, uh, that was formerly heavy or may still be heavy today, 
uh, just eliminate that fruit. You may have expended all the capacity you have for uh, properly metabolizing sugar, and you just need to avoid carbohydrates and just stick with what is essential fat and protein. So meats and fermented vegetables and fermented fruit eliminate those carbohydrates and limit those microtoxins and the concerns that many people who do the carnivore diet uh, and other scientists that are uh, doing research on macronutrients are finding out with regard to carbohydrates. So here are my fermented vegetables that are my kitchen. So consider eating good healthy meat and fermented vegetables and fruits why, uh, during your, uh, your Ramadan, uh, and uh, if you are uh, not of a Muslim faith and you're going to be breaking your fast and you just want to do some extended fasting, uh, I would invite you to consider trying out and, and seeing what's going on. And the best way to tell what's going on is to uh, do an MRI. We'll be getting into that. But many uh, stores, uh, health food stores, food co-ops, will have fermented vegetables and fermented foods. Uh, in a particular section, they'll always be refrigerated, which is a big clue if you see um, vegetables sitting on a shelf and they're not in a refrigerator, that they're not fermented. And this is a chilled open shelf. And the other thing I'll tell you about is watch out for the light, because the light uh, interferes with those microbes inside of there. So I always reach in the back there and get those jars in the back, because they'll have the more beneficial microbes uh, in it. All right, so I mentioned to you MRIs and you should get an MRI. It would be very interesting uh, next time you do Ramadan, get an MRI before you fast, uh, before, the Ram before Ramadan starts, get an MRI after, so you can see the difference on the inside to what happens to your body. And if you're just watching this video and you're not um, of the Muslim faith, and so you may not be uh, engaging in, in Ramadan, celebrating Ramadan right now, but, you should get an MRI and follow the benefit to doing it, particularly if you're gonna change your diet. So let's say you're carnivore and you wanna become vegan, or you're vegan, you wanna become carnivore, or you wanna try out the Mediterranean diet, or you are doing the Mediterranean diet and you wanna try out the carnivore diet, get an MRI and let's see where you are in your baseline, okay? So when you get an MRI, you get a scan through your abdomen, okay? And it, we're gonna create an image, the axial plane, and this is an unaltered view of an MRI through somebody's abdomen. This is their belly button area, and this is their back laying down on a stretcher as it's going through uh, an MRI machine. This is their, their spinal cord uh, right here and vertebral body part of their uh, sp uh, spinal column. And all this white stuff inside here, fat shows up as white. That's visceral fat. So that's fat hidden inside your abdomen. It's invisible obesity. Um, Carl Lenore, Superhuman Radio, uh, calls it radioactive fat, and I think that's a great term, you know, for it because it is in, it is metabolically active, secreting all of this inflammatory inflammatory molecules that cause disease and inflammation throughout the body. So muscle shows up as dark, so does bone and air, and this is fat inside and fat on the outside. But the fat on the inside is what is really inflammatory. And uh, there's also a particular type of fat um, that is on the outside that's really bad too, that's called deep subcutaneous fat, okay? So belly button, see that little area? Everybody's got a belly button, right? <laughs> so uh, that's the belly button, that little divot right there, uh, abdominus rectus, so six pack back muscles. Look at the fat invading these back muscles, okay? So no wonder you start to get crooked and you're gonna have a posture. I got rid of my fat inside my, um, my visceral, my visceral fat, and the fat inside my muscles, okay? And so now I got this great posture. I'm almost about to turn 61, and um, Sean O'Meara stands up straight now. I'm super happy about that. So uh, you uh, can too, if you get rid of your visceral fat and see what's going on with your muscles, okay? Um, all these people say, oh, I, I have low fat. I don't have this. I work out. How do you know unless you get an MRI and really see? you got to take a look. A DEXA scan is not going to show you the fat inside your muscles, okay? Human marbling looks like Wagyu beef. But getting back to these, um, this really dangerous deep subcutaneous fat, these are your love handles. These back areas, you know, back here. Uh, if you got these love handles, uh, it's likely 
that a lot of it is deep subcutaneous fat. So women, interestingly, don't have as much deep subcutaneous fat. They have more of the superficial subcutaneous fat. See that black line right there? That's the dividing point between superficial, beneficial superficial subcutaneous fat. It actually benefits you, it protects you from disease, from the disease dangerous deep subcutaneous fat, which goes from your muscle to that black line. So from that black line to the muscle, very bad, very disease form. From the black line to the skin, very good. Superficial subcutaneous fat protects you from disease because of a molecule called adiponectin, okay? Uh, the people who I think are behind everybody allowing them to get disease don't want you to know about adiponectin, but write it down. A-D-I-P-O-N-E-C-T-I-N. Adiponectin, Google it, uh, jump in chat GPT, and Google adiponectin benefits, okay? Read all about it, because they don't want you to know about it. Do you know who also doesn't know about it? Your doctor! <laughs> yeah, because your doctor isn't taught things that really help you out. They're taught things that really help out other people's bank accounts, big pharma, uh, big health care, big medical care, medical practices, health care practices. These people aren't all evil. They're just pawns and cysts. Now, the people really know about this kind of stuff and are keeping it from medical schools, they're evil. Now, if Dr. Sean has a strange accident, I want all my followers to go after and figure out what the heck happened, okay? I know a lot of people do not want me talking about this, exposing it, but I am, okay? So adiponectin, read about it. If you're fasting, um, it's, it's an important topic. It will help get rid of this stuff and help get rid of this, so you, you benefit from that. All right, let's look at this relationship between visceral fat and fat in the muscles. These are your legs, okay? The more of this visceral fat you have on it, the more of this fat you get in your legs. What does that look like? That looks like marbleized steak, okay? Wagyu beef, all right? This is inflammatory. You don't wanna be eating this kind of meat and you do not wanna have meat in your muscle like this in your body, okay? What you wanna have is an abdomen like this, mostly muscle. Look how big this guy's muscles are all dark you don't want to be mostly white you want to be mostly dark and same thing with your legs okay without all those white streaks okay so the healthy people have low vis low visceral fat and very uh, lean muscles like filet mignon and when you're uh, in ramadan and you're breaking uh, i think it's called the the, the uh, seder uh, meal I, f I forget what it's called gosh <laughs> i've eaten a lot of them probably a dozen of them um you do not want to have those white streaks. You want to be eating meat uh, that's lean, you know, that does not have. Now, lots of fat on the side is fine. If that animal has chunks of fat on the, the side of it, but not in the muscle, that fat is good, okay? The healthier the animal, the, the healthier the fat is. But when the animal is not healthy and has a bunch of marbleization, those animals walk like humans with a lot of that. They're, they're just not healthy. They're burdened with disease. All right, let's take a look at uh, another um, Muslim friend that I have uh, compared to a uh, friend, uh, American friend. So my Muslim friend from Bangladesh, uh, Asif, uh, is a great human being, uh, but Asif came from Bangladesh and Asif ate a lot of rice and bread. So do not eat a lot of rice and bread when you're uh, during Ramadan and you're, you're eating and you're breaking your, your fast because this is what forms inside you, all this white stuff. And uh, my friend Gabe um, is, is mostly muscle inside him. He's got a modest amount of visceral fat, but he did not eat bread and, and rice like Asif did. Okay, so big difference uh, between their abdominal scans. So what you eat causes different types of responses inside your body. Well, let's look at Asif, not from his abdomen this way, but his abdomen this way, up and down, okay? So Ah says, this is his abdomen, this is his back, this is F right there, see that? That's his foot, his head is up here, his abdomen is all this right here, kidney, stomach, a little bit of liver, 
uh, colon, small intestines, and all this white is visceral, inflammatory visceral fat. But right above his abdomen are his lungs, his chest, uh, air shows up as dark, and right above his chest, right there in the center of his chest is his heart. And look at that big chunk of inflammatory fat around his heart. Question, what do you got around your heart? Have you ever thought about it? Are you looking at that? What are you hesitating for? You need to get this scanned and find out. If you're able to uh, come to me, consider working with me. Your doctor's not gonna know about this. Radiologists don't know about it. Only Dr. Anna Rosa is the only radiologist I know of in the world who's reading both visceral fat and this uh, other ectopic type of fat, fat around the heart and fat in the muscles now and deep subcutaneous fat. So uh, hopefully other doctors are going to catch on and the more they catch on, the less likely they're going to try to kill me <laughs> from getting this. I shouldn't laugh about that, by the way. Uh, I take it very seriously because this, this is serious business. If, you, if we get our country healthy, get the world healthy, it's going to disrupt the economy because it's the largest part of our economy is disease, making money off disease. So um, we need to change that up. All right, take a look at the outside, how much the outside changes. Uh, another person I studied, uh, one of my clients, big belly, huge belly, okay? And in three months uh, after working with me, uh, got their abdomen flat, eliminating visceral fat, but look at how they did it from the inside, okay? So uh, three month period of time, Ramadan, um, you can have these kind of changes and uh, not quite as much uh, during Ramadan, but you can. So lots of visceral fat, fat around uh, my client's heart and look after three months, how much that visceral fat in their abdomen was removed and fat around their heart. So I'm gonna just step out of the way so you can see that. And that is what can happen to you uh, during Ramadan if you eat healthy and you uh, are fasting during that particular, that, that particular time and you're taking care of your body. All right, so here are my strategies. Uh, if you've lasted this long in this video, you can take a screenshot of these strategies so you know this is what I recommend. I gave this away free to become a healthier version uh, of your, your, yourself. Uh, by doing these strategies, you can really benefit yourself and uh, Ramadan is, is an amazing opportunity to do an amazing strategy, uh, fasting through the benefits of autophagy, where you clean up your, your house, you get rid of all the cellular debris uh, that is inside and accumulating in your body through autophagy, through extended fasting. The more you fast, the more autophagy happens. So fasting is is a great practice. You don't have to limit it just during Ramadan, uh, and you don't have to limit if you're Christian just during Lent, uh, which is the Christian version uh, kind of of Ramadan. And uh, you can, it's fasting is something you can benefit from uh, year round regularly and consider doing some extended fasting. All right, well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, give me a like on it. Share with other people that you know about, uh, that you care about, so that they have the benefits of also optimizing. And as always, please uh, ask questions, share comments uh, with me. I like to engage with my followers as much as possible. And, uh, and then I'm trying to sped, spread the strategies, how to reverse chronic disease as much as possible. You can help me by giving this a like and sharing it with other people and engaging in comments because that improves its attention on uh, in social media. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you um, uh, enjoyed this video and I will look for you again on other biological health optimizer videos. Dr. Sean out.